Season 2 has already been around for over a month, but Double RPG does not have any plans from not reviewing this season anytime soon. Episode 27 is finally here! So, what's going on everyone? This is Double RPG here, and I'm here to review to you the inaugural episode of the second season of TMNT. The Turtles have a big mission, but they will come across new enemies and allies in the process. Let us start it off by looking at episode 27, called The Mutation Situation. Some time has passed since the Turtles brought down the Technodrome, and they continue to celebrate their victory while patrolling on the rooftops of New York City on a peaceful night. They keep on gloating about their victory, and Donnie suggests that they go and see how April has been doing. As they do so, April mentions that she hasn't been out so much because Kirby won't let her out, and his nightmares over the whole ordeal from Season 1 has been getting worse. Elsewhere, Shredder has a meeting with the Krang, and they oblige to his request for a shipment of mutagen so that he can upgrade his army of foot ninja. Back at the sewer lair, everyone but Donnie plays some volleyball with the Krang communication orb, to which it infuriates the scientific guru to the core. Splinter comes in and comments that even though they still enjoy their victory, they have become too cocky and overconfident, as he feels that their enemies have not disappeared. After he says this, the communication orb starts to activate. While researching the orb signal in Donnie's lab, the Turtles and April learn that the Krang are using a transport ship to bring in a shipment of something very big. In order to track the Krang pod, Donnie gives April a detector made of a classic Game Boy, so that the waves from the metal beaters will know it's close by. Plus, they ask if Kirby can participate since his intellect on high radiation is coming from the aliens. While April is reluctant at first, she promises to see what she can do. Before departure, Donatello introduces his brothers to the T-Rocket as it can be fast enough to launch the turtles into the air and fly from their hang gliders. Up at the surface, April and Kirby easily find the crankship pass by them in stealth mode, and the turtles arrive just in time to bump into the transporter. Our heroes jump in and give the Krang a good fight, but certain complications come into place when they see that the Krang have an ape-like robot in their ship that proves to be a strong match for the Turtles. The shipment is opened up by the Krang bot, and the Beast bumps Michelangelo onto the control pad to open a ship hatch. It seems like it came at a bad time too, because the shipment of mutagen begins to fall off the ship and land into many places throughout New York City. One of them almost hits April, but Kirby protects his daughter from getting mutated. But too bad for Kirby that he is the unlucky victim as he transforms into a mutant bat and tries to take April away. However, Kirby's memories start to come back to him when she tries to fight back. Back at the space pod, the turtles continue to fight the beast who tries to shoot laser beams from turrets out of its... butt? Yeah, the toilet humor is about to get crazy. Luckily, our heroes manage to defeat the robot and escape from the pod while reuniting with April. As they arrive to where April is, Kirby starts to attack the mutants, only for April to be taken away. They come to the consensus that the bat is Kirby O'Neill, and they retreat to the sewer lair to think of some ideas on how to subdue the flying creature. After a brief lecture from Master Splinter about how to trap animals, they learn that food is the only answer. Mikey gets on the short end of the stick once more, as his brothers dress him as a fly, but the party dude is amazed by his gear that he decides to call himself Turflidal. Honestly, I was expecting Turtle Titan, because that would have been an homage to the 2003 series episode from Season 1, but I digress. Anyway, our heroes go back up to the surface to stop Kirby and rescue April, and after a long struggle from up in the sky, they subdue the bat in a cage inside a warehouse. April arrives and laments that she feels responsible for her father's transformation. However, Mikey tells her not to feel that way, as he slips it to her that the mutagen was accidentally unleashed by them when the Krang fought back against them. But this leaves her with harsh self-centered anger to her friend's accident. Kirby manages to break free and escape while the Turtles try to reconcile with April that they will not escape their responsibility. But the redhead's spoiled nature kicks in to where she tells the Turtles to stay away from her and not to come near her ever again. Poor Donatello becomes heartbroken by April's behavior, but Raph assures him that she just needs some space, as she'll have to come back to them on her own. Back at the sewer lair, Splinter learns of the truth to what really happened, and he tells his sons that they must not rest easy, as they must search every corner, nook, and cranny of New York City to find all the missing canisters of mutagen before more mutants are unleashed upon the citizens of the town. In the end, a squirrel scavenges through an alley to find a broken mutagen canister and sucks up the chemical with no stop. That dramatic squirrel stares at the screen only to show off that the mutagen has begun to take effect within the critter. But that will be a story that will take place for another time, as episode 27 wraps up from right here. One minute, 
there was tons of celebration, and the next minute, we see that the Turtles are in for a huge mission to undertake. Wow! If this story for Season 2 didn't kick off strongly, I don't know what would. So, let's get on with the meat and potatoes before we end off this review. First off, I have to give a mention that the best thing about this episode introduces us to another character of the classics, Wingnut. Who is Wingnut, you might ask? Wingnut appeared in one episode of the 1987 cartoon while appearing semi-regularly in the TMNT Adventures comic that was based on the universe of the same TV show at the time. He became one of the ten playable characters in the Super Nintendo version of Tournament Fighters, albeit him being one of the easier opponents. So seeing him going to have a huge presence in this show only makes me liking this show even more, and the chances that it takes to give minor characters more limelight. Next up, the comedy in this episode was actually pretty good. One part in particular would be the butt cannons from the Krangbot passing gas while shooting the laser. I couldn't help but remind myself why the toilet humor has somewhat of a presence in this show. Then again, it is made by Nickelodeon, so I can't complain. The turfidal alter ego for Mikey was pretty humorous too. Saying buzz buzz after every sentence to annoy Raph is probably the best highlight within the comic relief of the show. Or of the episode anyways. Last but not least, the combat was turtle-rific as we see a glimpse of combat from on ground when the turtles were fighting the Krang in the transport ship to them battling Wingnut in the night sky. Of course we all know about how great the fight choreography is when the turtles are on ground, but their combat in the sky just blows my mind with excitement. The whole fight between them and Wingnut reminds me of the fight between Batman and Firefly in Arkham Origins. Not to mention, I feel like I'm watching a Batman movie or cartoon while seeing this take place as Batman has experience for both land and air combat, so I do get some deja vu here and there. Now, what makes me peeved or annoyed when it comes to this episode's flaws? Well, I would say that April's self-centered nature when she separates herself from her friends leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Now, one would agree that anyone would feel that way if someone special were to go through something like what Kirby did, but getting angry at our heroes for something that was out of their control? That is cold, dudes. Finally, I will say that while the fight against Wingnut was awesome, I can't help but feel that it took a little too long to try and subdue him. Why? There is so much motion blur that it can be enough to make anyone very dizzy. When I tried to capture the images of this episode, I noticed that it was very hard to get in some really great shots, as the motion blur within the action was pretty heavy. This probably could have worked a little bit better if they tried to fight him on some rooftops while trying to stop him, but constant flight when trying to bring him down when it took that long? It kind of gets nauseating. I just hope that Nickelodeon keeps it cool from this ever happening a whole lot, as I kind of felt bored a little bit when this was occurring. It was a great fight, but the motion sickness can't happen for one seeing it. Other than that, Episode 27 still strikes the initial plotline for Season 2 with great promise. That whole setup at the end only makes me even more hyped, as this will probably become one of the most breathtaking missions our heroes will have to endure. This episode gets a 9 out of 10. A great start, with little things to nitpick, but still a very solid performance nevertheless. Go check it out. Alright Turtle fans, episode 27 of my review series of the 2012 TMNT cartoon has come to a close. Tune in next time as we take a look at the next episode called Invasion of the Squirrelanoids. That little critter at the end sets up for what the plot in episode 28 will be all about. Too bad it will be nothing but filler all over again, but with references from the Alien movie franchise? First, the Terminator, now aliens? Ho oh, ho, sign me up as I can't even miss this! Anyway, leave your positive and negative feedback down in the comments, and be sure to rate this video and subscribe to my channel in Double RPG Gamer for Solo, as you will find content coming from me that you won't find anywhere else. This is Double RPG signing off, and I'll catch you later, and let me end off this episode review with this note. Be careful, and keep your door shut, as a deadly critter might be dramatic in front of your eyes. See you next time, Turtle fans. <laughs>